Beginning in July, California is set to implement the country's most expansive law that would seal criminal records of individuals who have completed their sentences. Now, California will join seven other states with similar so called clean slate laws. But I want to be clear the law in California is the most expansive and the most aggressive action any state has taken in an effort to seal records of criminal history. Now, the new law makes California the first state that will automatically seal most, not all, most criminal records for those who complete their sentences. Advocates pushed for the change because they said such records can prevent once incarcerated people from getting jobs, housing, schooling, and more. So I want to pause for one second and just say that that is absolutely true. I mean, one of the reasons why recidivism is so high, meaning people who reoffend and they end up in prison again, is because after you've served your prison sentence, after you have paid your penalty to society for the crime that you have committed, it is nearly impossible to get hired because you'll be asked whether or not you've been convicted of a felony in the past. It's incredibly difficult to get an apartment to rent because landlords won't rent to you. So there are really some positive potential upsides here, okay? Now, applicants with criminal records can be half as likely as those without them to get a callback or job offer. Nearly nine in 10 employers use criminal background checks. So do four in five landlords and three in five colleges and universities. Proponents say about one in five Californians are living with a past record, facing around 5,000 legal restrictions, most of which are employment related. Of those restrictions, 73% remain permanent, officials said. So think about it, if you're not able to get gainful employment, if you're not able to find a place to live, you're much more likely to resort to a life of crime in order to survive. And that's what increases recidivism. If you've paid your debt to society, if you've done your time, you should be able to reintegrate into society, get a job, find a place to live without all these obstacles in its place, right? In your in, in your in your way, I should say. Um, so, Cenk, what do you think about this? Yeah. So it, this requires a balancing act. So um, first, all of the things that Anna said uh, are, are of course true, and. Um, and think about it, I mean, we have the worst of all worlds, right? We, we don't have any reform in any part of our system, uh, almost any uh, other than things like this. And so if we had a halfway decent prison system, uh, like Norway does, for example, our recidivism rate could be cut in half. But we have this brutal system and where we just pack uh, these folks in, sometimes we do solitary confinement, which is a form of torture, drives people crazy, right? All we do is just pour more fuel onto the fire, right? So if they can't get a job, they're gonna have to go back to the trade that got them into the prison in the first place. That is indisputably true, especially because they probably learned the craft a little bit better in the ridiculous prisons that we run in America. Now, having said that, the reason I say it requires balance is because there are some crimes that are so bad that no, we we should know about it. So for example, some things are obvious, right? Like child molesters. Mm. Uh, I mean, look, I agree with you that it's obvious. In California, nothing's obvious. In California, all sorts of incredibly violent crimes, including domestic violence where strangulation takes place. Not considered a violent crime in California. So that's what I'm getting to yeah. here. So uh, for example, if you're an employer and that person uh, has committed sexual assault before, pretty relevant, right? So I mean, I, I know, People have to get reintegrated back into society. But if a person has done sexual assault, let's say a couple of times, and then you expunge it and nobody knows, and you let folks like that into an, an environment where you are exposing other people, that's a problem, right? Yep. So then it becomes an interesting balancing uh, test. If you're in the camp of, no, I don't care, there is no balancing and there is no nuance, all the records should be wiped clean. I don't think you're gonna get a lot of people to agree with you. If you're in the camp of no, none of the records should be wiped clean, that should be a stain on them for the rest of their lives, no matter how small the offense was. You're unfortunately you're gonna have a lot, a lot of people in that camp, but but you shouldn't. That's a crazy position, right? The answer's gotta be balance. So in, in California, 
what ended up happening was uh, in 2016, there was a ballot initiative known as Prop 57, which I voted for uh, because I was misled, much like other Californians who voted for it. Uh, the idea behind Prop 57 was for people who are serving time for nonviolent offenses, a program would be implemented with you know, good behavior credit. So their prison sentence will be shortened, which sounds great when you think about actual nonviolent offenses. But little did Californians know that a bunch of violent crimes had been reclassified as nonviolent or non serious crimes, including domestic violence. Um, with the exception of causing great bodily harm. But even that's unclear because if you're strangling your partner, <laughs> I would say that causes great bodily harm. Um, raping someone who's unconscious, not considered a violent crime in California. Uh, another one is, uh, believe it or not, child trafficking in California. Not considered a violent crime, which is in, I think it's insane. I don't care. So it's, the criminal justice reformers who don't think it's insane, come at me if you want. You're crazy, okay? If you're trafficking children, that is a violent crime. So it's all about how these policies are implemented, right? Balancing the undoubtable need for criminal justice reform with public safety. And so far from what I've seen with California, and it's upset because like, look, there was a court order to do something about our overcrowded prisons. We do have overcrowded prisons in California. And so in my opinion, reclassifying violent offenses or violent crimes to allow for inmates who committed those violent crimes to get out earlier, not the right way to deal with overcrowded prisons, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I totally agree. So, um, so look, Prop 57 was, had a clear mistake in it. Uh, it's it only listed 23 crimes, so that led to vagueness because there are m more crimes that are uh, violent, as Anna just explained, right? And so uh, people thought, uh oh, people could use this to mean only those 23 crimes, and in fact, that is what happened, right? And so that led to the absurdity of uh, someone who's strangling uh, their domestic uh, partner is not considered a violent crime. That's absurd. So what should happen next is is fairly obvious. You propose a law, in this case, there actually is a bipartisan bill that was proposed. And, and then all the legislators agree instantly to fix it, because it's nuts to call that not violent, right? Human trafficking, obviously violent. I mean, what, why are we having this conversation, right? And that's where the crazy part comes in, where the Democrats said no. Yeah. I, I don't know why they said that, I think that's crazy. I, yeah. I would, if you did a poll on it in California, even though California is a very, very democratic state and in fact a very progressive state, I think the poll would show you that that has about 12% popularity. Nobody wants to say that these things are not violent because part of the reason is because they're not detached from reality. Domestic violence has violence in the name, right? It's, I mean, I mean it's obviously violent. So for people to say no, those are not violent crimes is absurd on its face. They have to fix that particular law. But by the way, then do and then do prison reform in the ways that we explain. Oh, da, oh, that's right. the other thing I have to mention that. So, look, the other issue is we, reforming prisons to ensure that it's not just a hell hellhole where you're it's just a punitive you know, form of punishing people. Like just Punishment, that's all it is. No, we need to rehabilitate people because people are coming out of prison as hardened criminals, more violent than when they came in because of the violent environment within these prisons. They don't focus on rehabilitation at all. So the other part of it is, okay, sure, I guess seal records, but that's under this assumption that people who are leaving prison are being rehabilitated when they're not, right? That's a problem too. So look, look I, I overall, just, I agree with this. I yeah. don't think that someone who's paid their debt to society should be punished for the rest of their life, should not be able to get a job, should not be able to find an apartment to rent. I, I think that the intent, the good intentions here are clear and I'm in favor of this. But it has to be a more holistic approach. And we keep doing these things piecemeal without ensuring that we have a system in place that's rehabilitating people. Yeah, look, I. I I can't stand the extremes, and most of the time, uh, mainstream media will tell you that Democrats and Republicans have extremes that are 
the same, and that's not remotely true. It's 90% of the time that's not true at all. Democrats are just corporate, uh, is a, they're a corporate party that doesn't really have anything extreme about it other than their love of corporations and their donors. Uh, but in this uh, case, there are extremes here. Uh, people saying that we should never seal the records of anyone that's committed a crime, uh, is, they're being absurd. When are you gonna stop punishing these people? You're gonna just hold that over their head for the rest of their lives? It's counterproductive anyway, it doesn't make any of us safer, even if that was your objective. And the other extreme saying, no, we should seal all the records, it doesn't matter how violent the crimes were. I, I don't agree with, and I would venture to guess 90% of people don't agree with. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.